Sea of Thieves Season 11 released a couple days ago, and it's actually a majorly needed update for the game. Not only was this update able to bring back more players and breathe life into the game for multiple reasons, but it also greatly affects PvP players. So in this video, I'm going to explain how this season revives Sea of Thieves, and at the end, I'm going to show you the strategy that I always use to constantly find emissary boats with loot. Firstly, every company besides Hunter's Call now has more levels to grind for. Prior to Season 11, the level cap was 75, but now it goes all the way up to 500. This means that a large group of PvE players that dropped the game after reaching the previous level cap will most likely come back because there are more than quadruple the amount of company levels to grind for. And with each 100 levels comes rings to earn for each company. And who doesn't want to show their devotion to the game? Increased level caps alone will populate more of the servers and make each session feel more alive with the influx of players coming back to Sea of Thieves to get these levels. Not only did the update bring increased levels, but it also introduced diving to a voyage or world event, a feature that can solve lots of players' problems that they had with Sea of Thieves before. Here's what I mean. Imagine that previous to Season 11, a player that only had a half hour to play wanted to complete an Ashen Winds event. They would first have to spend a good chunk of their time hopping servers until they found the Ashen Winds event, then they would have to buy and load up their ship with supplies, and then they would have to sail to the island that the Ashen Winds is at. And that sailing trip could be anywhere from 1 minute to 10 minutes. And at that point, they might as well have not hopped on at all since they just wasted most of their time. Now here's that same scenario with Season 11. That same player that only had a half hour to play first hops onto a server, loads up their ship, dives, and then gets to the world event and fights the boss within 5 minutes. And this isn't even exclusive to that world event. Depending on what company you're diving for, Skull Forts now have exclusive loot in their vaults for you to snatch, making Skull Forts completely repurposed and wanted now. And if diving saves lots of time, then there should be more short session players playing Sea of Thieves at any given moment, which means diving to voyages opens Sea of Thieves up to a whole new batch of players. Obviously, there was worry that anxious players might dive out of their server as soon as they saw a threat headed towards them, but here's why you shouldn't worry. Once a player dives to their voyage, they can't re-dive unless they finish that voyage. And even if you don't have an active voyage, just like Hourglass, you can't dive if there are other boats around you. You can't cancel the voyage you're completing to dive either, because then that puts a 10 minute cooldown on the diving mechanic. But if the player somehow does dive away from you, the treasure doesn't go with them. And if you're still not convinced that this won't ruin Sea of Thieves, running players have been doing this for years, whether it's quitting and rejoining a new server, or Red Sea running, or portal hopping through the tall tale portals. So Rare seem to plug all the holes in this escape strategy, and are trying to get these PvEers to engage in battles. Now with all of these rejoined players diving to world events and using emissaries, now is the best time if you're a PvPer. Since players can dive to their voyages, this means more than likely, the boat you see in the horizon has loot, since people can now simply dive to start their voyages. You won't constantly roll up to players that don't have any treasure and won't scuttle on arrival. But this diving mechanic isn't only useful to the PvEers. PvPers can use this diving as a super quick way to server hop with your supplies without having to use a tall tail or hourglass. If you want to hunt emissaries, use this strategy. Get to grade 5 reaper by whatever means necessary, whether that's hourglassing or doing world events. Once you get to grade 5 reaper, go to your voyages, click on gold hoarder, click on buried treasure, click on the first voyage, a pirate's treasure map, dive, and within a minute you'll be on a new server full of emissaries to sing. If there's no action on that server, complete the voyage by digging up the two chests on the island you arrived at, then dive again. Rinse and repeat until you find a server full of emissaries. I've tried this strategy over on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash sneaker, and it's worked tremendously for me. So how about you come follow me on my Twitch where I might be streaming Sea of Thieves right now. And if you want to learn the secret to amazing candidate and Sea of Thieves, then click on this video right here and learn all about it.